On Monday, we started off doing operations order. We talked about the first three parts of the operations order. The first part was a situation. and the situation, we talked about three elements. One of those elements was the friendly forces. One of those elements was the enemy forces. And then our detachments and detachments. Second thing we talked about was the mission, which is the who, what, when, where, and why. Who, what, when, where, and why. Remember, we state that twice when we're doing operations order to make sure everybody fully understands the operation. Third thing we talked about, which was the meat of the operation, was execution. Under the execution, we talked about the commander's intent, his purpose, and why we're doing this operation, and sort of how we're going to do it. The other thing we talked about, the concept of the operation, how we're going to go about doing this operation. Then we talked about tasks to maneuver units, because you're always going to have some other type of unit maneuvering with you. And then we talk about tasks of combat support unit, those units that support you, like your field artillery, your engineers, ADA, and so forth. And then we talk about coordinating instruction, because you're going to coordinate with someone when you're doing your operations order or doing your movement technique. If you're out in the field environment, so you got to coordinate with units to your left, units to your right, someone to your rear, and so forth. The last two things we're going to talk about, paragraph four, four and paragraph five. And paragraph four, you can't do a mission and sustain it for a long period of time without some type of support. That rucksack can only hold so many LBE, as you were, boots and uniforms, MREs. The canteens can hold on to so much water, so you got to get resupplied. Some of these elements that are going to help you with your resupply are going to be on the paragraph four. We're going to talk about them in depth in a minute here so you understand what they are. Some of them are in classifications, from class one to class ten. So when you come over the radio and you need some type of resupply, you don't have to say what it is, you can just say, hey, I need class ones at my location, Echo Golf, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And they'll know what to bring to your location when you do that classification. Check a hold. Yeah. Under your service and support, you got your SOPs, which are in effect. Remember what we talked about SOPs, standard operating procedures. Remember that because you will still see it again. Um, currently proposed trains. You got your combat trains and field trains as you start going to those other NCO and officer schools for those of you that become an officer. Uh, you're going to see these type of things that they'll be mentioning, combat trains and field trains. Uh, you're going to talk about cache points and times, casualty and damage equipment collection points. And we already practiced those during our labs and during our FTX casualty collection points. So when we get casualties, we have a designated area in which we can take those personnel that are injured or if they're uh, killed at that moment. We'll take them to a certain location. We'll have someone come pick them up from that designated area. And location of decontamination point. Remember when we first started talking in the situation, the enemy may have NBC capabilities. So we got to have a decontamination point in case you get hit by some type of NBC capabilities far away from your other elements to protect you and those other personnel uh, from being more contaminated. Check a hold. Under your services report, you got materials and services. First thing you're going to talk about is supply, the information of the classes and supply of interest to the platoon. As you can see under class one, is substance items such as food and your waters. Like I gave you the example, you just come over the radio and tell your platoon sergeant or your platoon leader, depending on what size element you are, or your, or your supply sergeant, I need class one at my location. Give him a grid coordinates or give him a designated point in which you already coordinated for him to drop off those for class one. Get your MREs, you get your food, you get your water. And the class two, you got your clothing. Those ACUs and those boots are going to only sustain you for so length, length, a length of a time. Depending on what type of environment you're in, you may have to get new boots, you may have to get new uniforms because they're getting worn, they're getting torn. Um, they can't last you the whole time you're out doing this long, sustained operation. Check a hold. Good job. All right, your class three, those Humvees, just like uh, Major Brown was talking about in the tanks, you only get about 300 miles to a tank of gas or a tank of diesel, you're going to have to get some resupply on your fuel. Class three is your petroleum, oil, got to keep oil in your vehicle, especially when you're on a rough terrain, uh, out in the desert, those engines are running hard, a mountainous terrain, lubricants, details, top off time and location. When they talk about top off times, that's when you're going to refuel your vehicle. And they have a certain way in which they go about doing that also. 
They can either just give you the fuel at that time, or they can do a combination log pack. They give you your food, your water, your class two items, and all that stuff at the same time. That way you don't have to make one trip in one designated area. In class four, what's called construction materials. What construction materials are your sandbags, any wire you need, any pickets you need to build a defensive position. Those are called your construction materials that you may need, especially when you're in a defensive posture. While you're on the offense, you don't really have to worry about doing anything with construction materials because you're moving towards the, the enemy. So when you get in a defensive posture, that's when you're going to need these type of materials to help fortify your defensive position. Whether it's out uh, individual position, whether you're on a Humvee or a tank, whether you're in a CP or a uh, checkpoint, or whatever you need to make yourself secure and the elements are uh, part of your unit secure also. You can get those barrier materials or barrier materials up to secure your defensive position. Check a hold. Check, check, check. You got your class five, which is ammunition explosive. Again, when you come over the radio, give me your ace report. Ammunition, first thing you talk about, if your ace report, you're low on ammunition, then you're going to say under class five that you need some old ammunition. Tell them what kind you need. 5.56, 7.62, 20 mic mic. If you're a mortar guy, you need mortar rounds. If you're a tanker, you need tank rounds and so forth. So you put all that information under class five when you're requesting a class five reload. Class six person demand items, alcohol, which is usually not included. If you need shaving cream, razors, stuff of that nature, personal hygiene, then that'll go into your class six. Uh, and your major end items for tanks, planes, weapons, etc. Uh, resupply, you gotta be specific. Those tank barrels get worn out, you may need to change the barrel in that tank. Or in a mortar tube, you may need to change those mortar tube out. Those are your major end items in which we'll fall under class number seven. Check a hold. Oh, check. Check. Okay. Number eight is medical supplies. Whether you need your combat lifesaver bag resupply, or if you're in a medical type unit, you need all those other supplies that are dealing with the medical, that's what you'll find under class eight under your resupply. Class nine is your repair, repair parts. It can be parts that you need to repair your weapons with. Also, a low period of time, those weapons to get worn out also. You've got to replace certain parts on it. Hands guards break easily, or you may lose some parts, or your soldier may lose some parts of those weapons. So you order that under class uh, nine. Or you may need parts for your vehicles. You may need some more tires for your Humvee or your striker vehicle. You may need some more pads for your tanks. Anything of that part that you need to repair, make sure you classify it under class nine. And um, class 10, Materials to support non-military programs, which are agriculture, economic, and development. You really don't see a lot of class 10 that you have to deal with. As it stated on the slides, dealing with your agriculture and economic, and economic development. And you all don't really have to worry about that part as a new junior platoon leader. As you start getting higher up in the rank, then you may des be designating a job in which you got to worry about your class 10 portion of support, service and support. Check a hold. Transportation, this constraints, and I said we're going to talk later on about limitations during movement because you may be restricted on certain movement depending on the terrain and depending on what type of vehicle you have. Um, operating hours, distribution, methods, and the manner in which supplies are managed, handled, and distributed. Uh, services such as laundry and showers, believe it or not, if you've never been out in the field, you do have services for shower and laundry. Someone will come pick it up for you. All your designated laundry, getting it clean for you, especially if you're out in the environment for a long period of time and you can't do laundry yourself or uh, get away from the barracks itself. Shower point, shower points will be designated in a certain, certain area also. So you make sure you get showers. You won't have to stay out in the field 30 to 45 days like you may have heard stories that you're not going to get a shower. Shower is part of your personal hygiene and part of the health. If you don't get clean up on, in a short period of time, then you're subject to disease, injury, sickness, and all the other stuff if you're not getting showers. Maintenance, <clears throat> non-SOP info on the maintenance of weapons and equipment. Again, going back, make sure you clean your weapons daily or according to your SOP. Doing maintenance on your vehicles according to your SOP. You usually want to do all these type of things on a day-to-day -day basis. Even if you haven't went out to the training site or went out to a, a combat zone and fired your weapon or drove your vehicle, you still want to do maintenance <coughs> on those vehicles. Write it down or on that piece of equipment, write it down on your 24 fours, 24 8 to make sure that that platoon leader 
uh, seized or that company commander sees that your equipment is serviceable and still working. Check a hold. Medical evaluation, uh, procedures for evacuation of wounded or dead if different from the SOP. Again, you establish that SOP, how you gonna do your medical stuff? How you gonna evacuate them? Are you gonna ground, evacuate them in a Humvee or a striker vehicle? Or are you gonna have some type of area type distraction of casualties and dead personnel? Uh, personnel itself, identifying EPWs, enemy prisoners of war collection points, and handling instructions not covered by the SOP. <clears throat> and you'll make that decision while you're out there as that platoon leader, how you're going to handle the EPWs. In the heat of battle, you may have to deter from what you was trained on, how you're going to do your EPWs and do it a different type of way. you got to identify a point in which you're going to take those EPWs because you don't want to lag that guy or that girl around, whatever type of EPW around with you when you're doing some type of movement or some type of mission. So you need a cash collection point and an EPW point for both of those uh, type of, of, of uh, events that may go on during your movement. Or someone else will come pick them up, and that'll take a lot off your mind, a lot of load off you, and you can go ahead on and continue your mission. <clears throat>